What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Odai J and we are locked in. This is day two of our eight day recap of Netflix series, The Madness. Muncie is starting to get set up. The last thing he found was a watch that belonged to Mark Simon up under his driver's seat. Now, this is where things get spooky because there was never a body discovered and everyone's looking at him very suspiciously because without no body, how can we know that Mark Simon is really unalive? And since you're the only person talking about it, you're our primary suspect. Now, this episode is called Djibouti. So, of course, you know, they're going to be talking about leaving the country. No extradition. Now, before we jump into this and break down episode two, if you like this kind of content, murder mystery, trying to figure things out, kind of a, a little dark side, but a little creative side, then the madness on Netflix might be a show for you. Hit that subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button. We're on that road to 75,000 subscribers with a goal of 100,000 subscribers by the end of 2025. Can we reach it? Who knows? Only you can help me out. So help a brother out and hit that subscribe button. Let's jump into it. This is episode two, The Madness. He has the face of the watch. He goes back into the house to talk to Elena and Demetrius about it. And of course, we all watch different type of crime shows. We watch First 48. And they're saying, get rid of the watch. Well, Elena's saying, get rid of the watch, but that's destroying evidence. Keep the watch and you can use it as leverage. But it also, if you keep the watch, it looks like you're guilty. So at this point, he really has no idea what he wants to do, but he decides to keep the watch. And this is a very risky move because if you get arrested or pulled over or somebody stops you and you have this, you begin to look very suspicious. Now that it's getting closer and closer to home and he's realizing that, Okay, they broke into my spot. They put this watch in my vehicle. He tells Elena and Demetrius to go off to her sister's house just to get away from all of this and lay low somewhere where they might not be spotted or found. Now, before she leaves, he's trying to talk to her. and She's like, I got to go because he wants to bring his family closer together, especially in this time of need. But her, she's like, nah, whatever nonsense you're into, me and my son, we need to get out of here. Not our son, my son. He gets a call from Questy and Questy is saying, listen, meet me at the law firm in 30 minutes. They want to ask you a few questions about why you rented that apartment or that cabin. And when he gets here, Questy isn't in an actual meeting. The two seniors of the law firm come in here and they're starting to talk to him. The only thing is they're not on his side. They're saying we can't represent you in this case. It's looking bad, real bad. Now, this has Muncie wondering, where's Questy at? Questy never showed up and he's the one that told him to come to this meeting. Now you can see the powers that be, they're starting to get their influence on to different people around the city. And these top lawyers are telling him straight up, we can't take this case on. And one of the main reasons of why they can't do this is because of his Black Lives Matters tie. Even though he worked at CNN, he was just doing articles on it, but his dad had an iffy pass also. Now they don't get in details what his father did in the past but this just isn't a bad look so it has to be something that has to deal with some maybe racial tensions just because they brought up the black lives matter we know that brother 14 in the forge or a white supremacy group so he's wondering what does my dad have to do with any of this but ultimately they say we're done we can't represent you you need to go find a different lawyer after he leaves him and questy they meet up now it turns out the reason questy wasn't in the meeting is because they told him if he talks to Muncie, if he represents him or does anything for him, he'll lose his job. So he couldn't be up there. And if he loses his job as a, a lawyer, then how can he help Muncie out anyway? Now, he can still give him legal advice. This is his friend. It's not like he's about to be representing him in court. But I can tell you, do this, don't do this, look into this. So right now, they're both kind of screwed because Questy can't help him out legally without losing his job. And Muncie, he's really on his own because he doesn't have any legal representation. After he leaves this, he calls Elena and tells her, yeah, it's looking bad. No one will represent me. They've been talking to other lawyers throughout the city. So Elena is saying, well, listen, how about I go find an attorney for you? I find someone that, you know, can represent you. Now he's already thinking this is a high profile case. I need some of the big wigs. I need million dollar plus lawyers. She's saying, oh, so you're going to cut me off like you did in our relationship. She's really trying to help. And at this point, he doesn't have any other options but he still declines that request. Throughout this series, what we're gonna notice is there's just random people watching from across the street, next to him. Everyone's looking at him funny. Everyone's wondering what's his next move or 
are they part of the people that are after him? Nobody knows. Now, it turns out he has another daughter. Now, this daughter, his name isn't on the birth certificate. Her name is Callie. Now, he's asking about her mother. She lives in a different part of Philly, and they haven't been seeing eye to eye as far as him being around to see her. She's out here. She's doing her thing in the community. She's actually a pillar. Now, he's just showing up to tell her, man, things are a little crazy right now. I don't want you getting involved in any of this nonsense or whatever you hear. And that's where she brings up, no one's going to come and look for me because you're not on my birth certificate. So right now, this relationship between the two is severed, but at least they're talking and he made the right decision to inform his daughter that things could get a little messy in these streets. Once he goes back to talk to Lucy and when he gets there, she tells him to come in the garage. Because remember, this neighborhood, there's no blacks out there. There's no coloreds out there. So she wants him to go in the garage because people are looking. She closes the garage and then she pulls out that stainless. And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm on your side. You think I would come up here if I did something? They're after me. I'm sure they're after you too. And she even says people are starting to make threats to her and her family about what's going on. Because Mark is gone. Mark was a high-ranking figure, brother 14 of the Forge. So she's nervous as hell and she can't trust anybody. Muncie doesn't really have anyone he can trust. He's like, man, please just put the gun down. And let us have a conversation, please. She gets upset. She runs back in the house. And of course, the first thing this black man does is hit the garage door opener. Because you don't want to be in a white woman's house and be a black man unannounced. So he gets up out of there. But when he gets in the car, Agent Franco, he didn't call. Meet me up. 21st Street, underpass, 1 p.m. Agent, 11.55 a.m. So he has an hour and five minutes to get there. But he made it out of that house safely. When he goes to talk to Agent Franco, they get there and he's talking about when he stabbed the guy in the neck. Now, he stabbed the guy in the neck one time with his pen, but Agent Franco is saying, are you sure it was one time? Because he shows him photos from the autopsy. Now, this gentleman has about 28 stabbings in his whole body. Of course, he didn't do all of that. It was one quick stab. Get the hell up out of there. So right now, it looks like he's getting framed. We already know he's getting framed, but Agent Franco doesn't know that. And his partner... They're like, nah, this is a little too suspicious. Maybe you are guilty of this. And he's like, nah, 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 nah. So what Franco wants is him to start helping out. Get him at least a name that he can follow so they can make this believable. Because right now, it's not looking good for Munchie. So he takes the photo from the autopsy and he starts to do a little bit of research. He's actually going to go to the library and try to find and dig up what information he can about this logo and what they got to do with the forge or any other group that he doesn't know about right now the research is on and remember we are on the clock this is where things begin to get spooky after gathering information from the library when he leaves there's a white woman in front of the vehicle now we just had an incident with a white woman at our house with a gun drawn on us in the garage unannounced now when he tries to get in his vehicle he tells the lady to move and she's like i'm not moving i know who you are so he puts his hand on her shoulder and gently moves her out the way. And of course, she turns into full care mode. Hey, what are you doing? Don't put your hands on me. And she reaches in her <laughs> in her purse for a gun. Now he sees what's going on. He sees a guy recording. He pulls out his phone and records. I'm like, you want to shoot me? Then do it then. Move out the way of my vehicle. So right now, everyone is trying to set everyone up. And he's just trying to make it home. And so he can get himself out of all this trouble. But they eventually move. Now remember, Quezzy can't be talking to Muncie or he's going to lose his job. But they're talking and Muncie is saying a couple of days ago I was good. Now this is crazy. They're trying to set me up. Quezzy saying, go back and talk to Mark Simon's wife. She might know something. He's like, nah, I was already over there. She pulled a gun. And then the title of this episode is called Djibouti. This is when he tells him, maybe you should just leave the country and go to Djibouti. No extradition. But he's like, nah, 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 nah. We got to figure out another way to get some information about what the hell is going on. Now, when your back's against the wall, this is when you need the most comprehensive skills. And that's what he's doing. He's just running through things in his head. And, of course, Quezzy is helping. But Quezzy can't get involved. He goes back to talk to Lori Simon. Now, when he gets there, he tells her to meet him at the park. She shows up at the park because people had not tagged up the garage. And he's just asking different questions. Do you know anything about this group called the Profane Discord? Do you know if Mark was in business with certain type of people you were okay with him being in the forge but not brother 14 
So he's giving her a rundown like he's the actual agent. But remember, Agent Franco said, I can only help you if you can give me some information. So what she has to do is go out and find out about Lori Jennings and find out does Mark have any connections with anyone outside of the profane discord group or we're all screwed and your kids, they won't be saved. He's gathered up all the information he can. Now he's going to find out about Lori Jennings. Now it turned out she had a heart attack that night after he had met her. So when he goes to the hospital to go and talk to her, see how she's doing, well, news media is out front and they're saying that she passed away. So he's looking like, what the hell is going on? She passed away and she's the only person that he met so far that knows he didn't do it and has some information. Now, some people call her a conspiracy theorist, but at this point, we got to run with a conspiracy because the truth isn't working. When he leaves there, there's a note on his car that says, stop trying so hard. At this point, he's like the hell with it. He drives on out to a gun store. He goes in there. He's like, I need a gun. I need one now. He's like, well, I can start you off with a nine millimeter. We can do a little background check. It only take about 15 minutes. He gets that and he gets him a gun. Now, this gun is for ambidextrous. So if you want to shoot with the left hand, you can shoot with the left. You want to shoot with the right, you can shoot with the right. You can throw it up in the air, close your eyes, randomly catch it and get the firing off with this thing. But he needs some protection because right now he doesn't know who he can trust or who's following and watching him. He gets over to Elena's sister Nadia's house. And when he gets there, he got some food for the family. But outside, we hear some music playing. And we hear some rowdy kids just sitting on the street. Ha ha! Yeah! Let's do it! So he goes outside and they're like, look at this scary guy. This scary fucker here. We know you're on TV. We know what you did. You killed that man. So he's like, man, I just need y'all to leave the block. Y'all making too much noise. They don't oblige. He goes to the car. Grabs that nine millimeter that he just had and let off four shots. Pow, 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 pow. They drive off. His family's on the inside looking out the window. People on the street are like, what the hell is going on? We haven't had gunshots out here, but he cleared them out. All right, there you go. Is Munchie losing it? He's shooting off shots in the middle of the street. He's using that toolie that he just got. He's trying to get information from the left, information from the right. It's all bad for him at this point. Agent Franco isn't gonna help unless he gets information. Lucia needs information too. Man, this is the worst 48 hours I've seen for one person in a TV show in a while. But it looks like he's trying to navigate through it. If you like this kind of content, make sure you tune in tomorrow for episode three. I'm Moe IJ. If you like this kind of content, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. We're on that road to 75,000 subscribers. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Jimmy on the beat, boy.